I went to church one day and my pastor slid his hand underneath my dress and he was so bold with it that he did it in front of the entire congregation, but in a way to where they could not see. And this is someone who my grandmother loved so much, who she would speak so highly of. However, he wasn't and he wasn't operating in a kingdom leadership the way he should have. I was born in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. I was reared up in a very religious home in that, you know, we couldn't go to the movies, we couldn't dance, my sister couldn't wear pants. Father was an ordained evangelist of this national church that we were a part of, the largest uh, African-American church in a Pentecostal organization. They taught the wives to take whatever they had to take in order to stay married. And my mother believed that she was a, a national mother of the church. She offered her children, me and my sister, to my father to be his sexual slave. Nay Phillips and Donna Fields say they were two of his victims. He guided me to the table and unzipped his pants and started trying to insert me. And I was like, no, no stop no words just guiding me to the ground and that's where in that room um he raped me you know um it wasn't wasn't sex because i was a kid what did rush do to you as a family it blew us all apart what he caused changed me permanently the sisters were in high school when they first met rush so mr rush was my teacher he was starting a church. He was looking for members. He was always looking for the misfit. If you didn't fit in, he was trying to look for you to pull you in. They say they initially saw him as a father figure who lavished them with attention they weren't getting at home. When Fields became pregnant by a classmate her junior year of high school, Rush supported her. He was like, you're gonna be right here with me. I'm gonna take care of you. He's like, you need to come to my church. He told me that he would, you know, take me under his wing. So I just held on to him for dear life. The sisters now describe Rush's behavior as grooming, that he gained their trust to manipulate and abuse them. He was telling me that, you know, I needed to wear clothes that were um, appropriate for a, someone that's pregnant. So he was like, I, I'm going to have to show you how to dress. I remember him pulling my shirt up and saying, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to wear that bra. You're gonna have to get some maternity bras. While he's asking me questions about them being tender, he would be touching me around my nipples. And then, you know, pulling my, my pants open, you're not gonna be able to wear those kind of panties. You're gonna have to get um, maternity panties. And I'm like, okay. And then he bought them. He bought the things that I needed. And so I would wear them. And then he would check on me to see, you know, are you comfortable? Are you okay? And do you feel at this point like he's still in this position of power over you? Yeah, well, I, th I just thought we were friends. And no man should be a friend to a young girl like that. So he pulls me in this room, he kisses my stomach, and then he starts to go under my clothes and, you know, eventually led me to the ground. I didn't know. I just, I followed whatever he said because I'm trying to think, who saw, did anybody hear this? You know, did anybody see us in this room? You know, who do I go to? Do I supposed to just not say anything? Who's gonna believe me? How old are you? I was 16. He guided me to the floor and he penetrated me on the floor of that church. And he begged me not to tell anyone. And I kept his secret. I um, just isolated myself. I too have gone through the journey of experiencing molestation. Not by a family member from me, so not that it makes it even any worse or better. And then with mine, a man of the cloth, a man who is supposed to help heal, a place where the hospital to go and save souls, he was going about abusing molesting little girls. He's a something there in the AME church that drew me and I wanted to go and start attending church with my mom. On that time, and Tim, you talked about the glooming. That is so prevalent because now that I think about it, 
the grooming process started to where I've always been a studious person, even as a little girl, where you're always helping, always working, always, you know, had the, the writing. So I actually started, and I didn't mention this before when we talked, typing mm. there at the church. Yeah. That was when the grooming started. Wow. There in the office. My God. The touching, the 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 talking, making me feel insecure. I think you all can see the gap in my teeth. So I was made to feel insecure about that, that individuals would not care for me. They would misuse me. They would abuse me. But this supposedly God sent person was going to help me and protect me. Eventually, the actual act of molestation actually started. As an underage girl, I was penetrated by a man old enough to be my father, a man that was supposed to be protecting me. To follow the biblical process of confession, repentance, and forgiveness. God wants anything out of us is to bring healing to all who are involved. I committed adultery. It was nearly 20 years ago. It continued far too long. It involved one person nor any other situation of unbecoming conduct, conduct for the last 20 years. I will not use the Bible to defend, protect, deflect my past sin. I have no defense. I committed the adultery. I sinned. I have been asked, why did I wait so long to deal with it? Why hide it all these years? The answer, there is no good answer. I told myself for years, silence served to protect everyone. The other person, those closest to her, from the hurt, from the public embarrassment, like to think that was true. For 27 years, I lived in a prison. It was not 20 years. I lived in a prison of lies and shame. Lying to protect the Lowe family, for years I thought I was a horrible person having suicidal thoughts, not realizing what had been truly done to me. That I was a victim, and I would still be in a prison if my brother, and many of you know him, Edgar Wolf, had not approached me just two weeks ago with what he had seen as a teenager that bothered him all these years. His pastor, in bed with his younger sister, I told you I committed the don't you? I told you it went on far too long. Did you do it? That's all we need to do. God, love us so much. We're sorry for everything that we have done wrong in our lives. We pray that you guide us this week. That we pray that you just help us.
Are you tired of the pain? The cycle of generational curses haunting your family for far too long? It's time for a change, a breakthrough. Introducing the free webinar, Generational Curses, No More. Repairing the Breach, authored by Laticia Liner McKinney. She's a transformational speaker, a certified trauma and abuse counselor, and a two-time author. Laticia understands the pain, the years of unchecked abuse and sexual assault at the hands of leadership in the church community. But she's here to tell you, there is hope, there is healing.